Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Harry Simiu, as always. And on this video, we're going to be bringing you some post-match reaction to Manchester United 1, Everton 1. Another disappointing result and probably performance as well for Oli Gunnar Solskjaer's Manchester United. They've got all the talent. In fact, they've got bags of it, but it's just not quite clicking for Oli's men at the moment. And as I say, they were held to a 1-1 draw by Rafa Benitez's Everton side, who, to be fair, have had a really good, solid start to the season. In fact, it's better than good. It's been an excellent start to the season. They're currently level on points with Manchester United. And at the time of recording, so just before the 3 p.m. games have kicked off, Everton currently sit third in the Premier League. So let's start with the lineups that the two managers picked. And we'll start with Manchester United, who are, of course, without the injured Harry Maguire. But Ole Gunnar Solskjaer chose to select this side. David De Gea in goal, back four of Wan-Bissaka, Lindelof, Varane and Shaw. He went with McFred in the middle of the park, Scott McTominay alongside the Brazilian midfielder there. Mason Greenwood started from the right. Anthony Martial started from the left. Bruno Fernandes was playing in the hole just in behind Edinson Cavani. So no Cristiano Ronaldo in the starting lineup and no Paul Pogba either. Both of them were on the bench. Uh, both of them did come on, as did Jadon Sancho, who was also overlooked by Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But unfortunately for United, they weren't able to have the impact, the substitutes that they would have hoped and seen them get over the line in this one. For Everton, it was Pickford in goal, a back four of Dina. Keane, Mina and Godfrey. Townsend, Decore, Alan, and Gordon made up the midfield with Damari Gray playing just in behind Solomon Rondon. So I guess I wanted to make a few points to get about Manchester United to be, you know, if I'm going to pick one team to focus on, I think the big story here is Manchester United. You know, Everton, yes, they've started the season really positively, as I've said, but I didn't see an awful lot from Everton today that I didn't expect to see in terms of their work rate, the fact that they were solid, that they were compact, all typical Rafa Benitez traits uh, to that side. So I'm not overly surprised by what I saw from them, but there were a few things from a Man United standpoint that did catch me off guard. Now, a lot is made of Aaron Wan-Bissaka's defensive ability, and I think he's a fantastic defender. I think he's really, really... Um, effective when it comes to one-on-one -on -one, uh, scenarios. We know that his stats kind of back that up, that he is very, very difficult to get past, very, very difficult to beat. I think he's got all the makings of a top, top defender, but I think he lacks technically. I really, really do. And while I've noticed it before, it was one of those things that was kind of in the back of my mind and watching today's performance really brought it to the forefront of my mind once again, because there were numerous occasions, especially in the first half, where Aaron Wan-Bissaka got forward down the right-hand side. He'd have balls pinged out to him and he just didn't have the technical ability to bring them under control, to make the right decisions in those moments in terms of forward passes, in terms of trying to help penetrate that Everton side. And I always think when a team comes and sits really deep and really compact, it's really important that your fullbacks do get forward and that they do help you. Now, similar to the situation at Arsenal, obviously Wan-Bissaka's role differs to that of the left back. It differs to that of Luke Shaw. And you only need to look at their average positions um, over sort of a, a number of fixtures to understand that Shaw is the one with the greater license to get forward. Why? Because he's simply more effective in those areas than uh, Aaron Wan-Bissaka is. But it felt to me today like Everton had kind of identified the sure thing, that they'd kind of taken steps to make sure that Manchester United got less space on that side. And therefore, they were trying to channel and funnel Manchester United's play down the right. And for me, Wan-Bissaka just didn't cut it. And look, it's not me saying he's a terrible defender or he's a terrible footballer, because I don't think he is. You know, there are some... You know, there are some things that Aaron Wan-Bissaka is incredibly good at. I just felt today that you saw those flaws in his game. You saw those shortcomings, perhaps more clearly than we've seen them in, in recent months. You know, Manchester United, they've been getting victories. Cristiano Ronaldo's been in fine form, getting them over the line when, when necessary. But it, I think it needed a game like today to really look at that team and say, Wan-Bissaka, Fred, McTominay... None of these guys are, are, are top, top level. And that's why, for me, Manchester United will be in the top four, but they're not going to challenge for the Premier League title. I kind of got sucked into the whole romance of it when Ronaldo came back in terms of thinking that he would be enough to elevate them to that level to which they, they would be competing with City and Chelsea and Liverpool. 
I don't think he gets them to that level. I think he takes them up a level, but I don't think he's going to take them up far enough for them to be a serious title contender because of those reasons I've mentioned. Too many positions in the team still for me uh, that are distinctly average. A player who did play well, I thought, for Manchester United, though, was uh, was Bruno Fernandes. Now, you know, we talk a lot about players getting in between the lines. And, you know, for me, sometimes that can be quite lazy punditry because somebody like Bruno Fernandes, well, he's on the pitch to get in between the lines. So if he's not doing that, what the hell is he doing? But there were some really smart touches from Bruno Fernandes. There were some really good passes, some really good moments where I felt like his teammates maybe let him down in terms of not having the quality to get the ball under control, not having the quality to make the next pass, to, to foresee what he was going to do and make the run. But, you know, Bruno Fernandes, I thought, showed his quality for the most part again today in terms of really leading the way for Manchester United in terms of creativity. Obviously, Pogba came on, Ronaldo came on, um, et cetera, et cetera. But they just they couldn't have the impact that Manchester United hoped for. And that was largely down to Everton being incredibly well drilled defensively. And that midfield pairing of Alan and Decore. I mean, that midfield pairing is is sensational, especially in this type of fixture. When you want them to get stuck in, when you want them to work hard, when there is a greater emphasis on the defensive side of the game than there is on the attacking side of the game, those two are a perfect double pivot. You've got Alan who reads the game incredibly well, sweeps left and right, makes sure that he prevents passes, cuts out passing lanes. And then you've got the sheer running power of Abdoulaye Decore. And Abdoulaye Decore's running power was a lot of the reason why Everton found that equaliser the way they did. Because first of all, it was great work from Damari Gray, who's been brilliant since his return to the Premier League to kind of nudge. I think he, it was Fred off of the ball and play the ball inside. But Decore senses that really early. He understands that something's on for Everton and he gets on his bike and he gets going and he uses his motor to get up alongside Gray, win the ball uh, or receive the ball, sorry, and then play it square to Townsend. Another player who's been in fine form, who made no mistake with the finish. Really good Everton counter-attacking goal, that. And uh, and I think they deserved to be on level terms because in the first half, they certainly had uh, more of the play. They certainly had more of the dangerous moments and they certainly looked the better side. But Anthony Martial's goal just before the break, you felt might take the wind out of their sails. Credit to Everton, credit to Rafa Benitez because they didn't let it drag them down. They got on with it. They got their heads up. They continued to do all the things that they were doing really well in the first half and the opportunity came its way. In fact, they thought they'd won the game as well when Yeri Mina slotted in from close range after Davis's pass. But again, it was a similar Everton move. Really well worked. They found the overload on the right-hand side. Davis, in my opinion, should have shot because looking at Yeri Mina, even before Davis played the pass, I think it was quite clear that there was a huge risk of him being offside there. The pass was played. He tapped it in. He gave it a little jig, little dance, whatever you want to call it. But unfortunately for Everton, the goal was ruled out. It was the correct decision, having seen the replay. But um, yeah, you know, Manchester United probably slightly fortunate to to even earn a point out of that in the end. So yeah, I think there are problems at United, you know, not, not as to... Not so bad that as an Arsenal fan, I can sit here and, and take the, the mick. You know, I'm sitting here saying that when we talk about problems for Manchester United, it's because in my mind, Manchester United should be competing for the title. Manchester United should be at that level. They always should be because they're that big a football club, but they're just not cutting it at the moment. There's too many players inconsistent in their performances. I think there's too many average footballers in that team. And when the going gets tough, they, they don't always you know, live up to the bill. They don't always live up to the hype. I mean, I don't mean the stars, by the way. I mean the McTominays. I mean the the Freds. I mean the, the Wan-Bissakas. These players are not on the level that City can pull out, that Chelsea can pull out. And, and for me, that is largely why United won't win it. Ronaldo will give you moments over the course of the season, but he can't do it every single week. Bruno Fernandes, he'll give you moments as well, more often than not. But these guys are going to have off days. And if Pogba comes on, doesn't really help. Ronaldo comes on, doesn't really give you anything. As does Jadon Sancho, who cost them an absolute fortune. Then, you know, you got to feel like maybe something else in the team is not quite right because we all know they're talented players. So clearly there's just a uh, something lacking in the build-up for Manchester United for me. And I talked about Wan-Bissaka 
and his role in the build-up breaking down quite a bit. I think you can say the same about Fred. I think you can say the same about McTominay. And I think that's largely why um, Everton found it quite easy to just sit off, to just make sure that they mark their men, make sure that they close the spaces and almost say to McTominay, to Fred, to Wan-Bissaka, you come forward and you try and make something happen. You try and unlock us because more often than not, they simply won't do it. Credit to Rafa Benitez is Everton, though. Um, really good, solid performance. They've had a great start to the season. I'm always wary of getting carried away with Everton because they normally start seasons quite well and fade away. So, um, yeah, we'll be interesting to see how they get on. But with no Richarlison and with no Dominic Calvert-Lewin, that is some result at Old Trafford, you have to say. So how long has Oli got? Who knows? But the pressure is certainly mounting on him, uh, you would think, because it's been a string of uh, largely disappointing results and performances from his Manchester United side. So um, I'm not saying he's going to get sacked right away, but I think the longer this goes on, the longer United seem to stutter in these types of fixtures, then uh, the more or, or the louder the noise is going to get around his future. And, uh, you know, they've spent an awful lot of money. Maybe they haven't addressed all the issues and maybe the club internally are aware of that. But bringing in Ronaldo, Varane, Sancho in the summer has certainly piled pressure on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And now he has to deliver. Make sure you like the video if you haven't done so already. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're around about a couple of hundred subscribers away from hitting 17,000 here on the channel. So please do hit the like button if you haven't. Subscribe if you're new. If you want to become a member, you can do so by clicking on the link in the description. So some non-Arsenal content for you guys today as we continue to uh, bite our fingernails and feel nervous about Arsenal's trip to Brighton this evening. I'll be back soon. Until then, ciao.